You're calling from a 447 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Um, this is Aaron calling from Edinburgh, Scotland. Hey, Aaron, what's going on? Hey, so um, I actually live in Montana. I'm just visiting Scotland, but I just cool. wanted to make a couple points about the Heath Mellow thing, but just as kind of an opportunity to say something about how we do a like pro-choice and abortion politics in conservative parts of the country. Oh, that's yeah, where yeah. I've always lived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even want to give like any time to the disingenuous stuff that was coming from the sort of center left against Sanders because it was, because it was so disingenuous and performative. But I right. do think that a lot of what we were hearing from like people who were sort of representative of the DC um, sort of, pro, you know, reproductive rights organizations that have a lot of political power in D.C., which is great. But I'm thinking specifically of like NARAL, who were got, you know, were pretty hard when they heard hard on Sanders and Perez when they heard about this whole thing. And I just think that there's been a real disconnect for a long time between at grassroots activists working on this issue on the ground in conservative parts of the country and the mm -hmm. national de left discourse on, on pro-choice politics that makes it really zero sum where, and basically what I mean by this is like these, these, the hypocrisy of we both have a ton of mainstream anti-choice Democrats in the yep. Democratic Party and totally. have forever. That's been a problem. Totally. And at the same time, any, any conversation that those of us in conservative parts of the country try to have about talking about a making the pro-choice argument from a perspective with, with voters from a perspective of, you know, government overreach, government intrusion, and mm -hmm. from the perspective of, you know, pro-choice politics is the best way to support a personal pro-life ethic for all of these reasons. Like, this is how you literally reduce right. the number of abortions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of pushback from national sort of organizations that want to make it sort of exclusively about about women's autonomy. We shouldn't have to apologize right. for having abortion. Right. And, right. And right. 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 I mean, of course, I personally feel that way, but that's not how you win people over. See, on this the is where I think this is and really I just important. To, you know, finish your thought. I just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, all I was going to say is that, the, and then the one other thing that I would say, and I know I'm, 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 I imagine I'm talking to somebody who's like minded on this issue, is that, yes. and I think James Thompson in Kansas was a great example of this. Part of the reason that Dems have run Republican light candidates in conservative parts of the country, as in candidates who are also pro-life and also anti-LGBT and anti-civil rights, is because they don't run economic populist candidates. Yeah. And so that's the only way you can win over people in conservative parts of the country. And those 100%. of us on the ground who saw what happened with Sanders, in, like I live in Montana, in a place like Montana, it was like everything we've been saying for years, which is like, People actually, like, mostly are completely politically disengaged and don't feel like politics represents them. And then you have a tiny minority who are driven to the polls effectively by far-right ideologues who are driven by anti-abortion politics. Yeah. And so, I don't know. This whole thing felt very emblematic of, like, everything that's wrong with abortion conversations at the national level and being disconnected from the grassroots. And also I just want to say that Jane Klebb, the, who's now the democratic chair in Nebraska mm -hmm. is such, was such an incredible progressive win. In my opinion, she's, she's genuinely amazing. Yeah. And she is not anti-choice and she Definitely. knows what's going on on the ground there. So I was just bothered by this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're a hundred percent right. And I guess that's what I'm trying to kind of get to is I think that we need to really, you know, I'm not willing to, on a policy level, just say like, oh, okay, whatever, you know, abortion and women's health is secondary. But I think where you're totally Absolutely. right and where there does need to be the flexibility and not just people from certain parts of the country injecting themselves elsewhere is the way it's talked about and how it's framed. Now, you know, on, at the same time, I, you know, I don't like when Hillary Clinton said things like, you know, it's a tragedy and stuff like that. That might be a little too far rhetorically for yeah. me. But I do think that going yeah. out and campaigning and telling people, you know, making it palatable and relevant in a local context is like, yeah, you got to do that. You just can't sacrifice the actual policy. But I, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Right. Thank you.